Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 704 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. And the Rangers coming off of uh, basically a nightmarish 4-3 home loss to the New York Islanders. Uh, second straight home loss for the Rangers. Second straight game in which they gave away a multiple goal lead and lost a two goal lead to be exact. They accomplished that wonderful feat against the Detroit Red Wings and now repeat the same uh, mistake or whatever you want to call it here at home against the New York Islanders. And this in some ways was maybe even worse. Uh, I mean, first of all, it's Rangers Islanders, so you really want to beat your rival. But beyond that, uh, you know, they had a two goal lead in the third period, at least against Detroit. I mean, it's kind of apples and oranges if, if you want to pick one loss being worse than the other. But at least against Detroit, Detroit started its comeback a little bit sooner than the third period. They started in the second period, scored twice there. And uh, at that point, it was anybody's game. But the Rangers uh, continue this really disturbing trend of just not being good at all in the third period. Uh, something that is just such a stark contrast uh, from what this team was all about last year when they were excellent in the third period. I believe last year in the third, they either had the second best or third best uh, you know, goal ratio in the league in the third period. And this year, I don't even want to look at it. I will eventually, you know, we'll, we'll do a catch-up episode where we dive into some stats and some numbers that are kind of interesting and kind of uh, explain why the Rangers are what they are. But you don't have to look up the numbers to know it's not good this season. The Rangers have not been good at all in the third period. And the thing that, you know, basically sucks more than anything is this was supposed to be a feel-good win for the Rangers going into the third period. This was supposed to be a feel-good episode of Locked on New York Rangers. It is anything but. I mean, there were going to be a lot of good things that, that we could talk about here. Chris Kreider, you know, kind of breaking out of it. I mean, for all of his struggles this year, he does have, you know, a six-game point streak. So I, I guess props for that. There's times where his play has been a little bit uneven, to be sure. Um, but he had a really good game for himself overall uh, for the most part. There was a goal early by the Islanders where he was out there on the penalty kill, and I don't think he did everything that he could to break up the scoring opportunity. But besides that, a good night for him. Scored a really nice goal on a uh, pass from Artemi Panarin across the ice, tipping goal for Kreider. And that's the kind of goal that we're used to seeing Kreider getting, and hopefully he can get back to that. But we're going to talk about Kreider, you know, having a big goal for the Rangers. We're going to talk about, you know, Vincent Trocek and, and how he's fit like a glove with this team and how he's continued to excel. He was really good for the Rangers last night. Uh, we were going to talk about how the Rangers' power play got back on track. They scored two goals on the man advantage last night. We were going to get to be able to talk about um, how the new line combinations worked for the most part for the Rangers last night. I mean, on one hand, you could say that, well, did they really work because the Rangers only got one goal at even strength? And that's true. Um, but a lot of this game was not played at even strength. That's first and foremost. There were a lot of power play opportunities for both teams. Uh, but besides that, though, even though there was only the one goal for the Rangers at even strength, uh, I did think that overall it, it seemed like these lines cooked a little more. And, you know, a couple of guys played better than they had in quite some time. Uh, we already mentioned Kreider. I would say even guys like uh, Kravtsov and VZ, the two of them I thought probably had uh, probably the best game that they've played for the Rangers all season. I know that's setting the bar fairly low, but, you know, it, both of them look good at times. There were going to be a lot of good things to talk about. That's basically the long and short of it. We we're going to talk about Capo Caco and how he's clicking with Mika and Panarin on that top line and how he looks dangerous, and he's continued his recent run of strong play. But all that stuff now goes to the back burner because of what happened in the third period in this game. Uh, you know, again, it, it's another third period meltdown for this New York Ranger team, another lead given away. Uh, another bad loss. I mean, uh, I mentioned in our last episode, I'm afraid to even say this again, but I talked about how at the end of a lot of seasons, uh, we do top 10 Ranger wins and we've done top five worst Ranger losses. Like I said, there are a lot of candidates building up for worst loss of the season. It feels like the Rangers are just outdoing themselves on a way too frequent ba basis here as it pertains to the worst loss of the season. This one uh, certainly in the running. And we're at a part right now uh, where the Rangers... All season last year had just two three-game losing streaks the entire season. Well, we're 14 games into the season here. They've already had a four-game losing streak, and they are currently on a three-game losing streak. So that is not good. Uh, again, just 14 games into the season, and um, yeah, not good at all. Uh, we're also going to talk about the atrocious uh, non-call when Capo Caco was tripped. And I know a lot of people were upset about that, and rightfully so. If you're a Ranger fan, you've got every right in the world to be mad about that, but it should have never even come to that for the Rangers. They played so poorly in the third period, and that's why 
you know, they were in a position where uh, something like that could cost them the game. Uh, the ref swallowing his whistle at an inopportune time. And uh, like I said, we're going to get into all that. But one thing I wanted to do here was actually take a look at a sequence very early in this game. And this is something that I was going to talk about regardless. Even when the Rangers were up 3-1 to one and everything was looking good and it looked like they might, you know, go on their way to a, get a win here. I was still going to talk about this sequence because it's a sequence... Once again, very early in the first period, but to me, it's just kind of summed up how everything has gone so far this season for the New York Rangers. So, puck drops, opening face off, you know, we're, we're off and running, and uh, the Rangers get off to a pretty good start. A couple of early scoring opportunities. Uh, you had Lafreniere, he had the puck behind the net, was very patient with it, uh, then got a pass in front to Vizi, who would, who would crash the net. A uh, really good save by Varlamov there. Then, uh, just a couple of minutes after this, maybe just a minute after this, you've got Panarin going up the left side. He makes a centering pass to Mika Zibanejad, and Mika puts it off the crossbar and out of play. So the Rangers off to a nice start here, basically dominating the first couple of minutes. Some good shifts. The rink is tilted. Uh, these new line combinations seem like they're going to work, and, and also maybe that the Rangers have gotten the message that the coaching staff has given to them. But instead, we get a situation where the Rangers shoot themselves in the foot. you got Jimmy Vesey taking an undisciplined, tripping penalty in the offensive zone, so the Rangers are shorthanded. Now, even if the Rangers kill off this penalty, it's still not good because you had the Islanders back on their heels to start this game. You're swarming, you're buzzing, you're going to score a goal. You can feel it coming, and instead you take a penalty like this, and now you have to go shorthanded. And of course, the Rangers did not kill off this penalty, and the Islanders end up scoring. Uh, you've got a uh, rebound goal by Palmieri with just 11 seconds left in the power play, and the Islanders are up one nothing. Kreider was there, couldn't break up the scoring chance. And um, yeah, I mean, again, th this sequence here is everything wrong with the Rangers this season. Playing good hockey for the most part and then shooting yourselves in the foot completely unnecessarily uh, with the bad penalty there by VZ. So not good there. You know, I, I keep mentioning the line combinations. I suppose we should just run through them really quick. Uh, for starters, you got the defense pairings, uh, Hayek and Fox together, which is interesting. Miller and Truba who had another really rough game. We're going to get into that. I, I'm at the point where I'm good with splitting the two of them up. Uh, even after Lindgren comes back, maybe you try Miller and Fox, and you try Lindgren and Truba. It's worth a, a, a shot. I mean, Miller and Truba just have not played well so far this year, for the most part. They, they've both had their moments, but uh, I, I think we're at the point where Ranger fans expect more out of those two guys. And then the third pairing, of course, Jones and Schneider. Uh, as far as the line combos, Mika centering Panarin and Kako. Trocek centering Lafreniere and Vizi. Uh, Lafreniere back on the left wing. Uh, the third line, Hedl centering Kreider on the left wing. Krasov on the right wing. And, uh, you know, Kreider, really the only guy that was demoted significantly uh, as a result of these line combination shakeups. He's the only guy that's usually in the top six that found himself now out of the top six. So, uh, and, and not unjustifiably so. I mean, again, I thought he was a little bit better in this game, but he'd been a little shaky, uh, you know, coming into this one. Uh, and then the fourth line, Carpenter centering Blay on the left wing and Goudreau on the right wing. No Ryan Reeves. He was a healthy scratch. It's a little surprising because it's Rangers Islanders, but it's not really that surprising because as I've mentioned in the past, I don't think Rangers Islanders is the most heated rivalry that the Rangers have right now. I mean, it was a little bit chippy in this game last night. It was a little bit chippy when they played each other earlier in the season. But when I think of, you know, nasty Ranger games, I think of games against the Penguins, games against the Capitals, uh, games against, you can probably throw the Flyers in there for sure. Uh, even Rangers Canes got kind of nasty toward the end of last season. Um, Rangers Islanders, for all the history and, and the rivalry and everything, uh, it's not as, you know, nasty and as much of a powder keg as some of the games are where the Rangers are playing some of those other teams that I just mentioned. So not having Reeves, a little surprising at first, but then when you think about it, maybe not quite as much. And on top of that, um, I think the best 12 forwards were probably on the ice here uh, for the Rangers. No offense to Ryan Reeves. He still has a role on this team, but I, I think the Rangers probably made the right call with their lineup decision. Ryan Lindgren, still out of the lineup. Uh, with the upper body injury, he is day-to-day. -day. Gautier out of the lineup with an upper body injury. He is day-to-day. -day. We'll see if he gets back in there, you know, whenever he comes back. Uh, the Rangers cannot get Ryan Lindgren back soon enough. He is the heart and soul of this team. We saw what happened last year in the playoffs. I know I keep citing this, but I, I think it's important, and it illustrates how important Ryan Lindgren is to this team. But the first round against the Penguins, Lindgren gets hurt. Games two, three, and four, especially three and four, uh, basically an unmitigated disaster for the Rangers in that series. No Ryan Lindgren, and, um, you know, it obviously showed. And then he gets back for game five, and the Rangers come back from 3-1, and they win that series. And that was awesome, but uh, 
we're a long, long way away from anything that happened last season because everything that's going on with the Rangers this season is basically the antithesis of what we saw last season. But I do think that Ryan Lindgren getting back in this lineup is going to help a heck of a lot. And once he comes back, like I said, I I'm about ready to break up Miller and Truba for a little while. You can always circle back to that. But the way things have gone for those two, and we will get into it in more detail sh shortly, uh, I'm completely fine if you want to go Miller Fox and uh, Lindgren and Truba once Lindgren is healthy and back into the lineup. And again, Ryan Lindgren cannot possibly get back uh, into this lineup soon enough for the New York Rangers. We're going to continue talking about this. We're going to talk about this third period meltdown. I'm also going to end today's episode by talking about a couple of positives, which it's kind of hard to do when you lose a game in this fashion, but believe it or not, there were some good things coming out of that. It's hard to fixate on anything other than the blown lead and the fact that you gave away another you know, two-goal lead and you did it against your division rival and you did it at home. Um, but there are nevertheless some positives uh, from this loss for the Rangers, and we will talk about those too. But uh, first, just got to let everybody know, today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Athletic Greens. I take Athletic Greens literally every day. I started using it about seven months ago, and I love it because I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great, and I wanted to see what all the hype was about. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy, has kind of a mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to every morning. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and aptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients helps with your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Everything. It is lifestyle-friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it is cheaper than your cold brew habit. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It is just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, we just want to go ahead and thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And so, like I said, I want to talk about this... Uh, debacle that was the third period for the New York Rangers. And before I even get into any of the, the specific details about this period, I can't be alone in feeling that, you know, going into the third period, it just doesn't have the same feel that it did last year. Last year, going into the third period, where the Rangers were up a goal, up two goals, uh, tied, whether they were outplaying their opponent, whether they were getting outplayed by their opponent, whether they were down by a goal, maybe even down by two goals, you still had a feeling that something good was going to happen, that this team was going to be at its best in crunch time. Why do we feel that way? Because they showed it to us. They did it all season. They were always at their best in the third period. It was a team that was going to outwork you and uh, just find a way to execute and be at its best. There was a different hero every night. I mean, I know the roster's a little bit top-heavy, but it always felt like you know somebody different was contributing in one way or another. That's how it felt last year. This year, going into the third period— at home against the Islanders, I do not feel comfortable about this, despite the fact that the Islanders are playing uh, the second game of a back-to-back. -back, and that's another thing. The Rangers have lost to a lot of teams playing on the second game of a back-to-back -back recently. And these have happened in cases where the Rangers are not playing in the second game of a back-to-back. -back. So uh, the Islanders have been really good in the third period this year, outscoring their opponents 22-11 to coming into this one, and it showed. But yeah, regardless of who they're playing or what the score is, I'm just not really feeling that good about the Rangers in the third period lately. And it's everybody. It's it's on the coaching staff for not having these guys ready to go at the start of the third period. They gave up a goal 14 seconds into this one. It's certainly on the players for, again, not being at their best when they need to be at their best. I don't know if they think that they're up by two goals against the Islanders. Islanders typically aren't a very high-scoring team, although they've been scoring a little bit more this season. Uh, maybe they thought they were just going to cruise to a win here. I don't know where that you know, feeling would come from. You've you got to earn everything in this league, and I think the Rangers are aware of that. Um, and then also the fact that Igor Shesterkin off to a little bit of a slow start this season. I think we're at the point where we can finally say that. Um, there's times where he hasn't gotten any help, but I would say that all three goals that he allowed in the third period 
none of them were what I would call like completely soft, like unforgivable kind of goals. And certainly there were situations where he didn't get help. But we've seen Igor Shesterkin make saves on shots like these. I would say probably on all three of them. Maybe not the last one because Anders Lee was in there by himself and, you know, did his thing. Uh, but with Igor Shesterkin, you come to expect the impossible. So I, I think it's not a stretch to say that uh, Igor, on his best day, would probably end up stopping at least two out of the three of these goals here that the Islanders scored, uh, which would have been enough to give the Rangers a win. But it's on everybody. They're just not very good in the third period. But to dive into some more specifics here, uh, let's talk about uh, the goal that happened 14 seconds into the third period. This was scored by Adam Pellick, and it, ch it uh, trimmed excuse me, the Ranger lead from 3-1 down to 3-2. This can't happen. This cannot happen. You cannot start a third period up by two goals. You know, the Islanders have to make up a two-goal deficit in 20 minutes, and you allow them to get one of those goals just 14 seconds into the period. It changed the entire complexion of the third period. It changed the entire feeling in the building. I think maybe the players felt it a little bit. It wasn't good because you're, you're just inviting them back into the game, and you're not sharp to start a period. That's unacceptable. You have to be at your best at the start of a third, uh, especially against this Islander team that, as we know— has been so good in the third period this season. The Rangers have to be on their toes, and they have to make it happen. And, you know, as far as, you know, who was on the ice, you had, I mean, I mean take, take a wild guess which two defensemen were out there for the Rangers. Yeah, Truba and Miller. It, like I said, it has not been a good start for the season for these guys. And Panarin and Mika and Kaka were out there as well. Uh, basically, the Islanders dumped the puck into the Rangers' zone. You've got Nelson and Truba both going for the puck in the corner. Truba has the inside track. He's got position, but Nelson is still able to get the puck past him uh, to his teammate on the other side, you know, behind the net there. Mika goes behind the net for some reason. He wasn't really all that close to anybody. He just kind of went back there. I don't know why. Very bizarre. Um, Parise has the puck. Seems to lose control of it a little bit. I, I couldn't tell if he was passing or if he just lost it and it happened to go to one of his teammates. But either way, the puck goes right past Keandre Miller in front of the net. Uh, it ends up going to Palmieri. Rangers are scrambling. They're all over the place. Uh, Palmieri moves the puck back to Pellick. Pellick scores from the very high slot. Uh, a good shot by Pellick for sure, top shelf. But as I mentioned before, not a completely unstoppable uh, shot for Igor Shesterkin there. So everybody's at fault on this one. And I know there's going to be some people that kind of, you know, they're not going to be happy that I'm picking on uh, Truba and Miller to a lesser extent as well. So I'm going to be fair here. I'm going to point out a stat that's going to be pretty surprising. You know, Panarin was on the ice here, too, and didn't really offer a whole lot of resistance. I mean, he was nowhere to be found on this play. Uh, Panarin this season, despite having five goals and 14 assists in the first 14 games, he is a minus eight. A minus eight for Artemi Panarin, which is the worst of any player on the New York Rangers. And, and keep in mind, when he's out there on the ice, I mean, he's been playing with Trocek pretty much all season. Trocek's a good defensive forward. Uh, he's been out there with Lafreniere, who I think at times his defense is somewhat underrated. And when Panarin's on the ice, he's typically going to be out there. You know, you're going to have Adam Fox out there quite a bit, Ryan Lindgren. Uh, these are good defensive players. Uh, hard to figure out how that's even possible, how Panarin has been out there uh, for so many goals against. Uh, but to continue uh, moving things along, as far as this third period meltdown is concerned, we get to the game tying goal. Uh, Philip Hedl is in the box for hooking. Uh, the Islanders are cycling the puck. You've got Barzell. He's in between Trotrek and Schneider along the boards. He's got the puck, uh, but he's able to shake both of them, moves the puck back to the blue line. Uh, they get it to Nelson for the one-timer. He's in the right circle. Nelson scores, and we are tied. It was a slap shot from the top of the right circle. He had Igor moving to his left, but unfortunately the puck, you know, kind of went past him in the other direction to his right. Uh, Igor maybe overcommitted, and, uh, you know, the shot goes in on the far side of the net, and just like that, we're tied. Uh, not quite as egregious of a goal as either, um, you know, the one that brought the Islanders to within one goal or the one we're about to talk about, which was set up by a terrible no call by the referees. But again, th this is a goal. It's a shot that you're just so used to seeing Igor Shesterkin come up with. And again, sometimes guys can become victims of uh, their own success, and you just expect them to go into God mode out there. Uh, but Igor Shesterkin, we've seen him make uh, saves that are a lot tougher than this one would have been. But this brings me to, uh, you know, basically the uh, the defining moment of this game. The Islanders, uh, it's now tied. Islanders have the puck in the Rangers' zone. Uh, Kako, rather, ends up getting the puck for the Rangers. And this is as obvious of a tripping penalty as you will ever see in your life. Uh, you had Wallstrom uh, behind Kako 
gets him with his stick, trips him. I mean, Kaka went flying into the air and falls down to the ice, and nothing was called. And just a couple of seconds later, the Islanders end up scoring. Anders Lee from the doorstep. A lot to unpack here. For starters, let me also mention, you know, I went back on NHL.com, and I uh, I watched the replay of a couple of these goals because I wanted to just kind of break everything down and see who was, who was doing what on all these plays. And, you know, obviously it just was not a, a banner moment for the Rangers. Nothing that happened here was good uh, on this goal that was scored. But I will say, going back and watching these on NHL.com, you watch the replay, and you actually get the Islander announcers because the Islanders are the team that score, and that's just how it's cut uh, on NHL.com. I know that from previously working there. Um, but even the Islander announcers, while the play was happening live, you know, they kind of audibly reacted to the trip, you know, realizing that Wallstrom had just gotten away with one. And even when they were watching the replay of the goal, even the Islander announcers were acknowledging that Wallstrom clearly tripped Kako on this play. Again, nothing. You will never see a more obvious tripping penalty not get called a tripping penalty. And it's unfortunate, but as I was mentioning before, it should have never even come to this. And of course, the way things are going for the Rangers, they're not playing well. They're also not catching any breaks. So as soon as this happened, uh, you just got the feeling that the Islanders were probably going to score. That's just the way it's been going recently. Um, but again, I want everybody to just, for a second, you know, really rack your brain here, really think hard, and try to come up with the two Ranger defensemen that were on the ice for this goal. Shruba and Miller. Again. And you know, after Kaka was tripped, the Rangers still had a chance to clear the puck. It was along the boards. Uh, Truba tried to lift it up the wall there and out of the zone. Uh, the defenseman reaches up, gloves it, knocks it down, and Truba was kind of caught puck watching there. You know, after he attempted to clear the puck, he just kind of stood there along the boards, and so he was very late getting back into position for the Rangers, uh, just completely out of the play. And Keandre Miller, you know, he was toward the center of the ice. Uh, for, a, for a second there, he was on Anders Lee, who ended up scoring the goal, but I think he kind of got caught puck watching as well, and maybe just thought that the puck was going to come out of the zone and started drifting toward the Ranger blue line. And so Truba and Miller are completely out of position. The defenseman throws the puck toward the net. Uh, Igor is able to make the save, but then Anders Lee picks it up and uh, scores from the doorstep. This is the one where, you know, again, Igor Shosturkin, you think he can do anything. This one would have been tough to stop, and he absolutely got zero help. This one, to me, falls on Truba and Miller. And as I said, if you want to split up Truba and Miller going forward, I am completely on board with that because something has to change here. The two of them just have not played up to par. And, you know, I've been told by friends of mine in the past um, that, you know, I'm kind of tough on defensemen. And I've been told this long since Locked On New York Rangers was ever a thing. I've been told this since Locked On was ever a thing. And maybe I am. You know, I, I know for sure I was tough on Mark Stahl back in the day. I know I'm not the only Ranger fan who was. But it's just that they're so much better than this. Jacob Truba is so much better than what he showed us this season. This guy is a physical, tone-setting beast out there when he's at his best and can chip in offensively as well. Somebody that you trust to be on the ice in big spots in the game. Keandre Miller looked like an emerging superstar at the end of last season. He was absolutely fantastic for the Rangers. I might make the argument, with all apologies to Adam Fox, that Keandre Miller was the best and most consistent Ranger defenseman in the postseason last year. I do not say that lightly. Obviously, we already mentioned how big Lindgren is for this team. Fox is a superstar. We know that. Uh, I think Miller maybe outplayed all of them in the playoffs last season. Not sure what's going on with him this season either. He just has not been at his best, seems to have regressed a little bit. And I think that eventually you will see Truba and Miller play a heck of a lot better than this. They will round back into form. But I'm good with, with since both of them are struggling, I'm good with both of them going out there with different defense partners. Put Truba with Lingren. You know, that's a nasty old school defensive pairing right there. See what they can do together. And put Fox with Miller, you know, two really dynamic players. Maybe if Miller's out there with Fox, maybe he can get his offensive game going a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I'm all about a shakeup now when it comes to uh, the Ranger defensemen, specifically Miller and Truba playing with different partners. Going to, uh, in just a second, dive into a couple of positives from this game because try to be glass half full on here. This, this recent stretch of Ranger games has made it tough to do that. But that's kind of what we do here. You know, we're, we're positive and we're glass half full. And there are a couple of good things that happen in this game. And I'm going to get to that in just a second. All right, so let's go ahead and keep things rolling here and get to the positives. Uh, there was one last thing I wanted to mention as far as the third period is concerned, though, before we get into that. So, you know, the Rangers, we, we broke down all the goals here. They're down four to three, about five and a half minutes to go. And then... You know, there's an offensive zone faceoff coming uh, with, I think, 2.06 remaining was the exact time left on the clock. 
and the Rangers pull their goalie again. I, I will die on that hill. That is too early to pull your goalie when you're only down by one goal. Uh, of course, in this situation, it didn't end up costing the Rangers because they didn't give up an empty netter. To me, that's just a little bit too early to be pulling your goalie when you're only chasing one goal. Um, but they pull their goalie, and honestly, the Rangers really got some pretty good chances here uh, in the last minute and a half or so, uh, throwing the puck at the net, but I wasn't, like, as engaged with this situation as I typically would be. If the Rangers were, you know, playing a team and the Rangers had played well recently and, you know, they're involved in a game that's a back-and-forth dogfight all the way through and they're just chasing one goal, uh, I'd be all about this and I'd be thinking, man, we're going to score, we're going to find a way, uh, somebody's going to get it done, we've got all these weapons, somebody's going to put one in the net. I didn't feel like it was going to happen here because, that's again, that's just the way it's gone for the Rangers lately. They're not getting any breaks and they're certainly not playing their best in crunch time. And on top of that, you got Simeon Varlamov, noted Ranger killer in net for the Islanders. And yeah, the Rangers got him a couple of times in this game, but now it's crunch time. And you just kind of get the feeling that Varlamov is going to, uh, to to shut them down in this spot here. He made a couple of good saves down the stretch here. And on top of the, everything I just mentioned, you know, with, with the, the, goal, the goalie being pulled for the Rangers and them looking for the equalizer, I was like just too much in shock to really be, like, locked into what was happening. I just could not believe that, again, the Rangers had given up a multiple-goal lead, this time all in the third period, and now they're trailing by a goal, and they're in a situation where they have to pull their goalie at the end of the game. Just completely mind-blowing that they were even in that spot. But, as I mentioned, there are some positives to take out of this game. Uh, we might as well just go ahead and dive into them uh, right here, right now. I thought, despite everything that happened in this debacle of a third period and, you know, everything we basically just talked about— uh, I thought the Rangers, for the most part, had the better of play in this game. And there's probably some people rolling their eyes as I say this. I realize it's extremely small consolation because you got to win some games sooner or later. And the Rangers are in a spot right now where they're finding ways to lose instead of last year at this time when they were finding ways to win. But for the most part, I thought the Rangers uh, certainly had the better of play. Uh, if you want to look into uh, a couple of stats to kind of, uh, you know, back up what I just said there, uh, the Rangers outshot the Islanders 40-26. to uh, the Rangers were dominant on the faceoff circle, 157% of the draws. That includes Vincent Trocek, who won 86% of his faceoffs. Trocek was just a beast on the dot. And he wasn't just winning them, you know, like uh, tie ups and, you know, getting some help from his wingers. And there were probably a couple like that. But Trocek was winning a lot of very clean faceoffs last night. So that was awesome to see. Uh, the Rangers were more physical, out hit them 31 to 18. And in my estimation, uh, had more scoring chances. I mean, the shots on goal would certainly suggest that. And spent more time in the Islanders' zone. But it just fell apart in the third period, as we mentioned. Uh, so there's that. There's also the fact that the Ranger power play looks to be back on track. They went through a mini slump there. Uh, there was a stretch where they went 1 for 15 not too long ago. But they are starting to score on the man advantage again. They went 2 for 4. Uh, on the first goal, uh, you've got Fox passing to Trocek in the neutral zone. Uh, Trocek passes to Panarin, leads him up the right side of the ice. Panarin just a brilliant cross ice pass to Chris Kreider. Kreider gets a tipping goal. And uh, Kreider on this one sort of got it off the heel of his stick, but it still went in, and that gave the Rangers a 2-1 to one lead early in the second period. And uh, good for Kreider getting that goal there. I mean, there's times this year where he's certainly been unlucky, put a couple shots off the post. Uh, and then he had that goal that almost counted in this game. Uh, the Rangers were on the power play, and he looked to have a goal from the doorstep there. And this puck, man, it was still on the goal line by a couple of millimeters maybe. They said no goal on the ice. They reviewed it. Uh, the call was upheld. Um, but it was good to see Kreider score here and, and score in a way that we're used to seeing him score uh, with those tipping goals right from the doorstep there. So that was good. Uh, then, you know, I just mentioned the play where Kreider almost scored. That was very early on a power play opportunity for the Rangers later in the second period. Uh, that same power play, getting late in the power play, in fact, uh, which is five or six seconds to go in this particular power play, uh, the Rangers still scored. And I love the fact that the Rangers, um, you know, they had a goal, or they seemed to have a goal from Kreider early in this power play. And again, a couple of millimeters made the difference, and it did not count. But the Rangers stuck with it. They, they really hung in there. They were swarming this entire power play, uh, doing everything they could to still score. And it took until there were just five or six seconds remaining in the man advantage for the Rangers to put this in. And again, this is what drives me crazy, because this is something that, I'm just mentioning at the end of the episode here, this is something that I probably would have led with if the Rangers just could have uh, not had a meltdown in the third period because this says a lot. When you can have a goal, I, I, not disallowed, but it, you know they almost scored and it didn't go across the line, uh, but to stick with it in such a pivotal point in the game when you're up 2-1 to one, you're looking for that multiple goal lead and then still score later in the power play, that's awesome. That's New York Ranger hockey. That's the kind of stuff that we've been missing this season, You know where they just stay with it, 
and they don't get discouraged. They've got each other's backs. They're opportunistic, all that good stuff, and they're awesome on the power play. And the Rangers end up scoring late on this power play here. Uh, Mika to Panarin for a one-timer, a long one-timer. Uh, the save is made. Uh, it looked like Varlamov had it in his glove. The Islander defenseman inadvertently knocked it out of his glove, and then Trocek picks it up, you know, a uh, couple feet away from the crease maybe, and he's falling to the ice, but he pulls it to his backhand, puts it into the net, 3-1 to one Rangers, and uh, unfortunately, as we all know, it that lead did not hold. Uh, the other bummer here is that the Rangers uh, allowed the Islanders to go 2-3 for three on the power play. The Islanders coming into this game had a bottom five power play in the entire league. The Rangers' penalty kill last year was such a strength. Uh, for the most part, they've been pretty good this season, but a little bit uneven. They've seemed to kind of go hot and cold with their penalty kill as well. So uh, that's another area where the Rangers could certainly stand to be a little bit better. And I figure uh, I'll leave you guys with a quote from uh, the man himself, Gerard Gallant, after this game. Uh, he took a more positive tone than he did after the Detroit game. That's what he had to say about it. I was happy with our game. I thought we played well, worked hard, competed, and at the end of the day, we lost a tough hockey game. Tough to swallow. And on one hand, I mean, there's probably some Ranger fans and maybe even some listeners to this podcast that, that want him to go off, you know, kind of like how I did in this episode here. But he can't do that after every game. You can't always have a negative uh, tone. And he's not really wrong about anything that he said. I thought the Rangers, for the most part, were skating very well in this game. They worked hard and they competed. But it's these freaking mental lapses that they just keep having early in the season. And it's more mental lapses this year than all year last year. I, I swear that's true. I, there's no way to actually quantify it. But when teams beat the Rangers last season, they had to beat them. They had to uh, execute better than the Rangers. They had to bring their A game, and they had to do everything in their power to defeat the Rangers. The Rangers this year are helping their opponents. They're shooting themselves in the foot. They're having these mental lapses. They're taking bad penalties. They're terrible in the third period. All the things, all these things I'm saying right now, completely the opposite of what we saw from this team last season. And that's what's so disappointing about this start for the Rangers. Now, we are only not even a sixth of the way through the season, uh, about a sixth of the way, give or take. So there is time to turn this around, but it's it's very important that it happens sooner rather than later because, you know, there are situations in sports where, you know, teams, they, they look good going into the season, and for one reason or another, they just never really quite seem to get their season off the ground. The team were play, that the Rangers were playing last night, the Islanders, they are a prime example of that. Everything that could go wrong went wrong for the Islanders last season, and before you knew it, they were completely buried in the standings, a complete afterthought as it pertained to the playoff race. I'm not saying that's going to happen with the Rangers. I don't think that will happen with the Rangers. But sooner or later, you know, if this continues, it goes from being a bad stretch or a rut, as Vincent Trocek called it after this game. It goes from being that to this is just who you are. You know, at this time last year, the Rangers were, you know, creating an identity, establishing who they were. They were the team that did all those those good things, you know, got away from bad penalties, excelled on special teams, excelled in the third period, got phenomenal goaltending, uh, got big-time play from the defensemen, uh, had different guys stepping up as the hero every single night. That's who the Rangers established themselves to be right around this time last season. It wasn't always pretty. There were times where Igor had to bail them out, but they were that team that was always going to grind and always find a way to win. Right now, they're finding ways to lose, and it has to change, and it has to change sooner rather than later. So, I figure that that's pretty much it. We can pretty much call it there for today. Uh, we are going to be doing a crossover episode with the Locked On Red Wings guys. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Rangers play the Red Wings on Thursday. So uh, that will be your Thursday episode. And um, then we'll talk about whatever happens against Detroit in the uh, in the Friday episode. So definitely looking forward to all that good stuff coming forward. And let's just keep our fingers crossed once again that the Rangers turn things around against uh, the Detroit Red Wings. We shall see. Uh, but that will do it for today, guys. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. And definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Thanks for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts.